little bit of an interesting move to Canberra in terms of family. Mm. Uh, the wife wasn't too keen on it to start off with, but she's adapted. And uh, I guess for most superintendents that live on course, it doesn't really matter where you live. It's a matter of uh, the passion for the job and, and trying to get as much done as you can and, mm. and present it the best you can. Going with bent grass was something, disease was always going to be in the back of my mind about what we needed to do, uh, control programs, and obviously having close to 25, 30 hectares by the time we finish it, the cost of applications was going to be a bit of a concern. Early on uh, in the well, probably six to seven week mark, we found there was a bit of pythium uh, both in the greens and the tees. We didn't really find it too much in the fairways. so. Potentially there's an issue with um, the sand or you know, growing the grass in that early stage on the sand as opposed to a topsoil. So yeah, there was a little bit of pythium which we um, put an application of banol out for and that worked quite well. We didn't have to do any follow-up applications and, and since then the greens and teas have been quite healthy. We have noticed a few areas of pythium and um, a little bit of dollar spot appear and we monitored it and we've been fortunate enough, some of the worst areas we hit with dedicate, but for the most part, we haven't had to do a broad acre application over all our fairways through the growing period as we're just trying to uh, keep an eye on it and monitor it. This is one of the first holes that we uh, completed. Uh, one aspect you can see, the bunkers have been built up a lot from what they were. They tended to sit quite low unless they were green side. The green on this hole has been built up quite a lot. Uh, once again, it goes back to the strategy that the architects wanted to implement throughout the golf course. Being a short hole, it's just under 300 metres. It is a, a reachable drive for the really good golfers. So they wanted to make the approach shot in a little bit more difficult. And in the past, it was probably too easy a short four. So now it's quite a difficult short four. But Overall, they've tried to maintain the uh, difficulty of the, the nine holes, similar to what it was. So they've just concentrated on particular holes to add a little bit more of a challenge to. And they've probably made a few holes a little bit easier as well, including the, the next hole, the eighth. So one of the aspects we, we looked at when we were doing the design was the tee sizes, obviously with the severe uh, frosts that we get through the winter period and, and the temperatures, we needed to make sure that with minimal grass growth in about three months of the year, we had good sized tees for uh, spreading the wear. It also helps you spread, especially on the par threes, um, the wear and, and positioning for course setup and, and challenging golfers from a day-to-day -day basis, whether you want it nice and easy or uh, tuck the tees to the left with a left bunker and a left pin, you can always trick it up a little bit if you want to, but um, on average our tees are about 500 square metres and give us uh, up to 48 positions for our normal white market use. So it's basically six weeks before we have to go back to that same spot, which will hopefully uh, help spread the wear a little bit. We're on the fifth at the moment. Uh, this green's been rebuilt. The previous green was a three-tier green. Uh, it's kept a little bit of its character, but it's been altered to, to be a lot friendlier for the golfers in terms of the playability of the green itself. Uh, the strategy of the holes been looked at, so when they decided that they'd redo the bunkers, uh, greens, tees, they looked at the strategy and decided that um, the strategy that Ogilvy Clayton wanted to introduce uh, included wider fairways, but positioning on the fairway was quite important for your shot into the green. So. On this hole in particular, you really want to stay to the right-hand side of the fairway, which is a little bit more elevated than the left-hand side. And it opens up the shot into the green from the right where you've got the approach. If you go to the left of the fairway, then the line in is coming across the bunker and you can't actually see the, the green surface itself. This is part of the construction phase for the bunkers. You can see just over the other side where the boys have been fixing up the lip. Uh, We've got about 70 mil of gravel, and then that gravel spread right up the face. This will get boarded out. We need to make sure it's dry, so at the moment the guys you can see are just setting up the uh, marquees so that we can keep them dry in, in the winter period with the severe frosts that we get. So we go through that phase, and then 
once it's all nice and dry, we'll board it out, make sure the depths are consistent, and then custom bind come in and spray their polymer coat, uh, which sets pretty hard within about 48 hours. And then once that's set rock hard, give it a bit of a brush to make sure that there's no loose stones, uh, just check around the edges mainly, and then we'll uh, grab our sand and put the sand in. So it's generally from the time we get to this point, once custom bind come in, we can have a bunker ready for play in about three days. So Andrew, how, how did you find the recovery um, after your disease damage with uh, with the banal and the dedicate in particular? We didn't actually get to the point where we had severe loss. We noticed obviously the, the disease was in and around uh, a few areas. In particular the greens, the application of banal, we went at, at full rates uh, as soon as we noticed it. And within probably a week to a week and a half, you could see that the pressure wasn't there anymore. That, the, um, the pythium had sort of lost its fire about it and recovery, the greens were probably back to normal within three weeks and that, they were still pretty young too so they were, they were still growing quite well. Uh, in terms of the, some of the dollar spot we found with the creeping bent grass, it was semi-mature when we got the dollar spot outbreak. We hit some of the worst areas with, uh, so there's probably three fairways we hit with dedicate and recovery was really good. Uh, no need for a follow-up application. Saying that, the weather probably changed a little bit as well in terms of um, humidity disappeared, the wind picked up. So there was some environmental factors there that helped us, but uh, the products have been really good so far. And uh, yeah, keeping some stock of those products, both Banol and Dedicate on the shelf, just in case the weather um, turns and obviously disease pressures hit. Mm -hmm.